Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm so excited today. We have Pamela Osley, an amazing writer, and we're going to have so much fun today. She has written four incredible books and several that I was just so excited to talk to her about. She is a professional psychic, an author, a consultant, a radio host who has the ability to see auras. And she, as I said, has written four successful popular books, Life Colors, Love Colors, Infinite You and Make Your Dreams Come True and has a very extensive uh, clientele, including celebrities. I just watched you talking to uh, Whoopi Goldberg on an episode on The View, uh, and so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, Pam has spoken uh, at the TEDx Talks in 2012, and she's the founder of www.auracolors site designed to help you create success, joy, and fulfillment in every area of your life. And... She lives in Santa Barbara, which I'm super jealous about. Must be nice. So welcome to the Reality Revolution, Pamela. Thank you, Brian. I am thrilled to be able to have a conversation with you. I've watched you um, speak and we're interested in the same things, which is so exciting to me because there's not that many people no, that can go there. There isn't. So you have talked about a variety of things. Some people tab you as the aura girl. For people that maybe don't know who you are, Tell us a little bit about your story and how you started seeing auras and got into all of this stuff that we're talking about. Okay, well, let's see. Um, my background is in working with troubled kids, autistic kids, learning disabled kids. I got my background in, you know, basically helping people. Then I got burnt out and then I went into the rock and roll business and started working with concert promotions and hanging out with big rock and roll stars and you know that whole lifestyle right. and started running a theater and everything and i've always been interested in spirituality metaphysics quantum physics for as long as i can remember um i like pushing the boundaries i don't like being told what to do well you're similar you yeah. know or pleasers but you know don't fence me and i know there's more to life so i've always been a searcher always been a seeker always wanted to know who we really are and what else is going on so when I was running, I'm in Santa Barbara, she said, when I was running, I was running a big concert facility here, the outdoor, the Santa Barbara Bowl, and I was also running the oh. Libero Theater, which is basically plays and concerts and whatever. And one night, one of my friends said, hey, come with me to this guy. He's going to, he's a psychic. He's going to do readings. He's going to channel. And I went, well, okay, okay, fine. I walked into the group that night mm -hmm. and he looked at me and he pulled me up in front of the group and said, you, you get up here. You know how to do this too. And I went, what? <laughs> Excuse me. And he said, no, you've been asking to go to the next level. This is it. And I was like, wait, how did you know that? Wow. Because I'm always wanting to new, know new things. So basically I got thrown in the water that night. He basically, yeah. in the deep end, no less, he said, I just want you to tell people what you're seeing or sensing around them, which I'd never done before, ever. Right. And Brian, I was shocked that I was seeing very specific things about people that I'd never met before. I knew one woman, every time I looked at her, I kept seeing this old beat up green car that was having problems. And I, and I described it to her and she went, that's the car I drove here in. It was my neighbor's car and I couldn't get it. To so it was that. And then oh, there was wow. a woman over to my right. Uh -huh. I saw the spirit of a little girl standing next to her. Never happened before in my life. And I knew she was pregnant. She didn't even know she was pregnant. So she went to the doctor after that and found out she was pregnant. She had a little girl. So I was shocked. I was seeing things like, how am I doing this? How am I doing this? And then, um, Brian, it's interesting because I look back over my life and I went, wait a second, no wonder I knew that. No wonder I had a dream about that. No wonder I knew that, that it started, all the pieces started falling into place yeah. that I had had experiences before, but I hadn't been trained to be, you know, hear about psychics or premonitions or any of that stuff. It wasn't my background. So I started putting the pieces together. A lot of people started finding out that I had that experience. Well, I told a few friends mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, okay, give me a reading, give me a reading. See, <laughs> right. you get. And then, all of a sudden their friends started coming to me and then their friends, friends started coming to me. It's like, wow, within a year of, of basically finding out that I could do, I, I hate the word psychic because it's got such old connotations to it. Right. Right. So when I found out I could do expanded consciousness, um, clairvoyant, clairaudient, all of those things. At, within a year, I met a woman who could see auras. Mm -hmm. And she, I would bring her up to Santa Barbara to do workshops up here. And I 
find out that what she was seeing in people's auras and the colors matched with what I'd been picking up about them psychically. Mm -hmm. And so I went, oh, that's a blue. Oh, that's a violet. Oh, now I get it. So basically right. I developed the ability to be able to sense the aura colors and not long after that, I developed the ability to be able to see them. Right. So seeing auras and, and describing to people what that says about them, what it reveals, not doesn't run them, just like astrology, right. it doesn't run them, it reflects back what a person has chosen in this lifetime, chosen right. their life theme and personality, careers and relationships, compatibility, all that. So um, I, I use that as a tool to talk to people. But right. as soon as, well, you know, Brian, as soon as you start tapping into that expanded consciousness, that awareness that, wow, we're better, you know, we're bigger than this. We're not these little biological little machines <laughs> running around on the planet. There's something more amazing about us. Right. So I studied more about quantum physics to find out why I could do what I could do and what else we could do. And that's when I learned how to do remote viewing and, and, bending spoons and mm -hmm. talking to people on the other side you know, who have crossed over mediumship, tuning into other lives, past, present, future, um, being able to, I mean, it just opened up a whole world of abilities mm -hmm. that that's what I teach. That's what I help other people. And it's not just me. There are so many people on the planet. I'm sure yeah. you're encountering them that yeah. are having these beyond normal experiences to show that we we really are shifting. We're becoming right. more and more aware that we're more expansive, more amazing. You can call it spiritual beings, higher level beings, higher consciousness beings, whatever you want to call it. We're becoming more and more aware that we have those abilities. And so we're not as limited. Right. It's amazing when you start thinking about auras, it makes me think that we're just walking prisms. <laughs> and what we're seeing is just the distortion of a, like some prisms can be distorted so it's more of a certain color but we're walking around as the light is coming through us and works what you see in our aura is like a prism yeah well we're we're right. made of energy right i mean we're that's, made of energy that's, right that's quantum physics it's physics we're made of energy we're made of light right. so it makes sense that we're radiating out light what i find fascinating is the different colors that people radiate Mm -hmm. tells a story about them, says who they yeah. are, their, their theme, their life purpose, who, you know, what, what, what they decided to experience in this lifetime is right. all shown. It's all revealed in those particular colors, not to limit people. Right. Basically I do that kind of work to give people permission to be who they are, to validate them. Because right. usually when I talk to people, they'll go, oh, I have felt that way my whole life. I thought there was something wrong with me or, you know, right. I, I, I knew that ever since I was little, but I was told I was wrong. So now I've become something else and I don't like it. I feel in a, right. in a prison instead of being able to be my true authentic self that I came here to live. Well, I recommend everybody go on your website, auracolors.com. They can take a quiz and you have a survey and you can find out about your aura. Now it told me I was blue with, in, with uh, violet secondary, but I kind of f felt some, um, I felt a little bit of that crystal vibe too when I read the descriptions. Uh, it's interesting and some of the questions I found interesting, um, you know, it's probably not, it's hard to do with the survey, but it's interesting. I found a lot of concordance with what it said. Well, a lot of people um, have been trained to think they're a certain way, so they, they, they right. have a hard time answering the questions. So you find right. that in, in the Myers-Briggs testing and companies that do the test, people answer what they think they are, what they should answer. Right. Actually, sweetie, you were born violet and yellow. I've seen oh. a lot of yellows test high as the crystal, uh -huh. okay? Um, so, and you've got some blue in your outer bands and I can understand why you would test high as the crystal, but you're way more curious, way more adventurous, way more funny, way more, you know, yeah. um, crystals can be very fragile and violets, you've definitely got violet, okay? Violets right. are the visionaries on the planet. They want to um, change the consciousness of the planet. They want to educate, inspire, and empower. Their, they want to do their own projects. They don't want to work for other people. They're visionary. Yes. They see things. That you sounds see like things. me, yeah. Yeah, you guys see things and you don't understand why other people can't see what you can see, right? It just feels like right. common sense to a violet. Can we actively change the colors of our aura? Can well, I try to pull in more blues or more indigo or can I, can I, if there's an imbalance, can I actively change the colors of my aura? Sure. Now, well, so first of all, and you do have yellow and we yellows, by the way, we're pleasers, but we don't like being told what to do. Okay. <laughs> the little stubborn yellows connect with nature, dogs, 
Um, they either do creative work, healing work, or physical work. You guys are energy workers, or right, violent right. Or therapists and teachers and whatever. So I, I don't know why my nose is itching with you. Anyway, um, I would what? never <laughs> limit anyone. Yeah, my, I would never limit someone and tell them they can't do something ever. I don't want right. somebody telling me that. I wouldn't do that to anyone else. In my experience, what I see, the two colors that are the closest to your body are your life colors. They're, they're the equivalent of like your astrology chart, your um, and astrology, numerology, iridology, they reflect right. who you are. The outer bands change all the time, depending oh, on what's okay. going on with the person at the time. So um, I, although I, can t I don't believe people um, can't change their aura colors, I've maybe only seen that a handful of times in the 36 years I've been doing this work. And right. it's only because the person that changed it completed what they came here to do, and now they're on to new adventures. Uh -huh. Um, usually when somebody goes, well, I feel different. I don't feel like I did when I was little. It's probably because your real colors, you finally let yourself emerge with that and become that instead mm -hmm. of what you think you were supposed to be. So can you pull in other colors? Absolutely. We do it all the time in the outer bands. Now, this is my experience with the aura. Right. Other people, different healers have different experiences. They see different colors. It doesn't mean somebody's wrong and somebody's right. It means mm -hmm. we're having a different experience. I explained just like we taste food differently. Right. Because right? there are people out there that like Brussels sprouts, and I know they are not tasting what I'm tasting, right? right? <laughs> so we see the colors differently, the aura differently, but the information should still fit. So the outer bands, you can bring in colors. You, you know, I've, I've noticed when people are on vacation, because yellows are fun loving, they're playful. You know, right. they like their freedom, they like nature, they like, you know, they like to have fun or get out and exercise something. So when people are on vacation, I see them adding a lot of yellow in their aura. Oh, um, okay. I've seen women when they've been pregnant, they add blue in their aura because blues are more nurturers, they're mothers, they're, they're caretakers. Right. You know, yellow violets can be like that too because yellows are healers and sensitive and violets want to help humanity. They want to make a difference here. They want to teach higher concepts, right. um, improve the quality of life for people. So a lot of you yellow violets will test high as a blue. Um, but, and I see blue right. in the outer bands and you brought that in, but you're really a yellow violet, sweetie. Fascinating. So uh, one of the cool things about your books is that you have an affinity for Seth. I'm a, I love Seth. I have several episodes. I've read the Seth and discussed Seth material. He was, a, the, as a channeled, Jane Roberts was amazing. Uh, and then I've, and so I've explored other similar channeled works. And one that makes me think, keep on coming to my mind. So I want to get your, is uh, the law of one or the raw material. And they discuss the, these rays that, that we go through as we, as we evolve through this density in our, in our incarnation, it's all very similar to what you say. You know, the root is there, as we see with other chakras, people talk the root is the red, the orange is the sacral chakra, the solar plexus is yellow, mm -hmm. and the green for the heart, and blue for the throat, and indigo, and violet and indigo. So um, my question to you is, are they related to the chakras or is there something different? Because you hear that a lot. And, and sometimes I've found in, in helping teach people when they focus on certain colors, it helps activate certain energy centers and chakras. But are they two separate things going on? Do you understand what I'm trying to ask? Oh, yeah, yeah. In my yeah. experience, um, they're different systems, but okay. they're all related. Uh, for They're example, awfully. when I see reds, red, the red life color is mm -hmm. very similar to the red base color in the chakra. They're right. very physical, very grounded, very, you know, it's all about being a physical being in this planet, you know, eat, right. drink, have sex, be, you know, blah, it's very right. grounded, physical. So that relates. Um, violets are visionary. So I usually see violet. Violets mm -hmm. come from the third eye. So I can see that. Right. Um, blues, blues come from the heart. Um, and greens, mm -hmm. when they get issues, they come, in my experience of the aura colors, mm -hmm. greens can have digestive issues because they come from this power center right here. So right. that's the green stuff. So they're related, but they are different systems. They are different but systems. We have the dis different systems. I've heard you discuss this before. So that whatever people are drawn to, whatever they can right. relate to, that's their doorway in, that's their pathway in. It's not an right. either or, it's, it's connected, just different systems. Right, I totally understand. Um, so, and then you talk about this on your website. Um, if I if I want to look at your aura the way I do it, is that I kind of soft focus. Yeah. I soft focus, and I might look a little bit beyond you, 
and I am so if I do that, I can naturally start to see the the outline. And if, and if I do it a little more, I can focus on the outer line. And and then if I allow myself, I start to see the colors. But there is a part of me I can tell that is intentionally blocking it. Like mm -hmm. it does. It's maybe there's a part of my brain that is too much information. Uh, that we're we're always we actually there's a lot more going on that we could see that when we were babies we could see, and then slowly we said ah oh, that's too much we better to, and then we over time try to try to limit what we can see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I love that. That's how I started to see them too. It's right. Like, and that's how I teach people to see it is with soft eyes, kind of mm -hmm. like when you find yourself daydreaming or staring or something, your eyes right. are not totally in focus. So in other words, you're not trying too hard. And then what my experience has been that the aura is the strongest around the head. So the fact mm -hmm. that you just look just past it, it's easier because you're not trying too hard. You're not forcing it. So right. that's how I learned. And most people, when they start seeing it first, they see a white glow around the head. You know, I mean, look at way back when they painted halos around spiritual people, you right, know, right. and everything. They obviously their aura was so bright and so powerful that people could see it. Right. So most people start out seeing white around here, around the head, because that's where the aura is usually the strongest. Um, and you're right. A lot of people I've seen animals and babies mm -hmm. can see auras. I've watched them react. I watched a dog growl at something, and I look at the person's aura and I go, "Oh, I see what they're seeing." Or uh, yellow dogs love yellow, so they're usually like wagging their tails and running up to yellows because right. they're like best friends, right? One of the um, coolest they, things you said. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please forgive me. I can't help because I have so much. Uh, <laughs> my cats, they have gold auras. I was oh, like, oh. "Yay!" So they think they're human. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, because around animals, except for dolphins, when I worked with the dolphins, I saw the same aura colors around dolphins that I see around people. But otherwise, yeah. animals, I've usually just seen, like with your cat I, and dogs, that kind of, I've seen either a silver blue, which means that animal believes they're an animal, right. or a golden yellow, and that animal believes they're a person. They believe they're human. And so... Right. It, I, I love that you've got golden yellow cats. That's cool. <laughs> well, it, I think when you have a golden yellow cat, now I understand why they are are so insistent and 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 meowy and and, and they're they don't just sit around as much as other cats because they, yeah. they want to talk a lot and they and they're struggling to talk to me all the time and I can hear they're trying to in change their and I didn't realize and then when I when you said that I was like oh now I understand. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and we do. People have been taught. To shut it down because it's not reality. I, I've run into a lot of kids. People bring me their kids a lot and their kids when they were younger could see auras mm -hmm. and they were told by teachers or people, oh, no, 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 no. That's just, don't do it. And so they've learned to fit in. Mm -hmm. So they shut it down. But we all have the ability to do it. Some right. colors, some aura color personalities, like you violets, violets are the first ones to see things. You guys can see beings on the other side or flashes of light or, you know, images. You guys are the, because you're so visual, you're the first ones to see things. Right. Yellows usually feel it in their bodies. They're more kinesthetic. So yellows right. can walk into a room and go, ah, you know, wait, wait, mm -hmm. you know, or, oh, I love, you know, this person feels good to stand around. I can hug them or touch it, you know, right. you guys feel it more physically. Um, blues just get the emotions usually of people. The mental colors, tans and greens, they they analyze everything. Right. So it's hard for them because they've 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 learned how to be analytical. And by the way, you have some of that in your outer I, bands. I do definitely so have some tan. Learned, yeah. Yeah, you've learned some of that to be able to analyze here and fit in here and, and function on this plane because otherwise yellow violets are just sensing and feeling and seeing things and knowing things and they're very psychic. And and so tans are like, wait, 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 and greens too. I gotta think about that. I gotta analyze it. You know, what's the effects? Right. What's truth, whatever. And so that's one of the reasons why you can block it is because tans and greens are, they, they get more skeptical and cynical about all this. True. So in, an interesting phenomenon I've noticed in reading auras, I'm going to ask you about. Some people have huge auras. Mm -hmm. They're huge. They can encompass rooms or, mm -hmm. and then some people have very, very thin auras. Yeah. What does that mean? What is well, that happening there? Often I've seen that there's a couple reasons that'll happen. Often I've seen that you violets typically have huge auras because violets need to reach the masses. They need audiences. They need to be seen and heard and they've got messages. So their auras get very big. I mean, you, I, I worked in the in theater and rock and roll for so long. I always watched casting directors. They spot a violet a mile away. Right. Like, violet has so much charisma and their auras are usually so big. They walk in a room and people feel them. They notice them. Right. They right. just they get their they belong getting attention. They've got things to say. Mm. Right. The colors that usually withdraw their colors so that they're close, like tans, for example. 
Tans live mostly in their heads. They're much more analytical, quiet. They can be more introverted. So their, their aura is usually closer to their bodies because mm -hmm. they don't give out their information. They're more private. They're more quiet. They're more, sometimes a little more guarded. No, you know, they might be a tan and a violet. So then it's interesting. Right. <laughs> so that can, ha that can affect the aura size. Also, people that are happy and vibrant and, and they feel safe here on the planet, whoa, their auras can get very big. You know, yellows can do that too because they love entertaining people and engaging and getting them to laugh and mm -hmm. curious. So their auras can get very big if they're happy. And people right. don't feel safe on the planet or they're really introverted or shy, whatever, then their auras tend to be a little bit more contracted at, for safety. Now, one out of a thousand, and I've even had other... I've seen other people asking about, I, I will see a triangular aura. Have you seen mm -hmm. this? Every once in a while, it's a, it comes to a point. Uh, very rare, but mm -hmm. I've seen it more than once. Have you, have you seen this? Um, I have seen, well, let me just ask you this. What does that mean to you? Because I want to see if I, I see something similar. I, I had to look it up. When I, and I found in the raw material, and, and they had talked, they, they had asked, um, who they were channeling about triangular auras there. And they just, it's just a unique part of the creator's aspect. They were created for a certain reason. And the, it, uh, I don't know. It's just that, you know, just like looking at different animals and, and it just, it's just part of the variety of the creator is all I've been able to get an answer for. Yeah. Uh, so well, I don't know if I've, I've never got a chance to talk to one so I could, could delve in. I would love next time I see one go up and just say, hey, you got a triangular aura, but it's not very rare. It's very, I mean, it's not very common. It's super rare. So it's not like if I saw somebody across the way, I would come go, hey, you got a triangular aura and they probably. <laughs> yeah. I've seen, I don't know that I've seen triangular auras per se, but I have seen people that have a lot of energy coming out of their crown chakra, mm -hmm. coming out of the top of their head. Right. Whew, and it can, it can be very condensed as it goes up. Some right, people, that might be uh, what I'm seeing. Yeah, because some people it's very condensed. It's, it's, it's almost like controlled crown chakra whew, coming right. to a, Other people I've seen crown chakra is very open. And so it's more like, expansive like that so it has to do i'm sure with their consciousness and how it's right. out there and how it's being shown or how it's being revealed to someone like you who can see them fascinating now the the really the the wonderful book infinite you you talk about something that everybody that watches my channel is is very interested in something i talk about in my book and i have had several episodes and that's quantum physics and parallel realities. You say you have this amazing story and I, I recommend everybody to read that book. You, uh, there was somebody that you, you loved and you went to him and say, I, I, I really love you. And they were like, I am not interested in you and it's never going to work out. Leave me alone. And that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you imagined in the book, you imagined these different universes. And one of them was a loving universe where this person loved you. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. You entered into this universe, you, you moved into it, and it, he, he loved you. And, and even the, your friends around you, it was loving. They were in relationships. Yep. Talk about that a little bit. You used this concept of parallel realities to find love. And a lot of people out there, I've tried to explain that, that uh, you're not necessarily manipulating the person. You're just entering into the reality where that person has the same aspects that you, you want you're wanting to look for, right? That's it. That's it. So, you know, I hear you a lot talk about frequencies and vibrations. I do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's all frequency. So basically I didn't, um, first of all, we're, we're multidimensional beings. Yes. We're infinite beings. So that means we're not just this little Casper the ghost stuck in our little bodies, right? The soul's inside here, like this little one dimensional, you know, whatever. Really? No, we're multidimensional beings and we focus our energy to create something that looks like a body so we can have this experience. But we are right. multidimensional and quantum physics has, has evidence that parallel universes, other realms, whatever you want to call it, other frequencies are real. So um, if you don't mind, I want to explain to your listeners, oh, they're Please. probably more advanced, but I, I use the same, the analogy of radio waves. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so in the room you're in right now, there's at least 10 radio stations broadcasting and all those radio waves are around you, but you're not aware of them because you're not tuned into them. You're not set to the same frequency. If you went to your tuner and put it on a certain channel, 101.7, you're gonna hear the, the talk, the music, the program that's coming out of that, it becomes your reality, right? right. You change it over to 98.7 and now you hear the music, the talk that's coming out of that, that becomes your reality. But 101.7 is still around you, it's still happening. Mm -hmm. You're just not tuned into it. You're not, as you used the term, aligned with it. You're not set to the same frequency, so you're, it's not your reality. So what I did is, I, when, when I totally fell in love with this guy, typical musician, commitment issues, right? It's like, <laughs> no, nothing to do with me. I didn't have any commitment issues. <laughs> anyway, so in that reality, I realized that my frequency was set, my beliefs, my thoughts were set to, I'm not lovable, I'm not enough, um, I'm not attractive, you know, anything. It was like low self-worth, right? And right. so that's what, that's the realm I was in. That's the universe I was experiencing because my beliefs, my thoughts, we create our own reality. I was aligning with the universe that reflected that back to me. So when I started started learning about parallel universes, I went, hey, wait a second. Now if that they're real, we should be able to use those to gain mm -hmm. more freedom, right? Just like aerodynamics. Right. We didn't know we could fly till they realized that aerodynamics was a real science, you know, was real science. Wow. They got that was real. Now we can fly. So it's given us more freedom. So if, if we are multidimensional and there are parallel universes, realms, frequencies, whatever term you want to use to it, I go, then we must be able to use those. Right. Okay? They're available. We're infinite beings. We can create anything we want. So what I noticed is, yes, I did the experience of, of imagining, experiencing myself and believing that these other realms existed, these parallel universes existed. And I went into another one and I noticed that in that one, I still had a belief that I wasn't enough, mm -hmm. right? And I went, I have to shift what I'm believing, what I'm, because it's going to reflect back to me. So I started shifting. I started imagining going into, I want to say imagining, you know, Einstein says imagination is more um, powerful or more important than knowledge because what we think we know limits us. Mm -hmm. So our imagination can open us up to greater ideas and concepts and truths, right? So I kept going into different universes and I'd see him and I'd go, and he had moved to the East Coast, by the way, I'm in the West Coast, I'm in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. right. So he moved to the East Coast to be in a band there, like, leave me alone, blah, blah, blah. And so in each universe, I went into another one and went, no, he's happy there. I would feel guilty if I pulled him here and I still feel like he doesn't want to do that. So this is not the universe I want to align with. Mm -hmm. I went into another one and then another one. And then I went into the fifth one. And, and Brian, in that one, I knew it was a real universe, just as real as the first one was. Still frequency. And we create mm -hmm. our own reality. It's all energy. It's all thought. It's all our consciousness creating, right? So in the fifth one, I saw him not being content to be on the East Coast anymore. So I wasn't pulling him away. I felt more lovable. I felt more like, you know what? The reason I loved him so much is because his soul loves me too. And so I saw him giving notice to the band, breaking up with the girl he was seeing at the time because they weren't right for each other. I wasn't manipulating. I was observing this. Right. I was in that universe watching the whole thing unfold. <laughs> I could smell the grass. I could feel the sun on my body. It was very real. And then I saw him going to um, Iowa to see his meditating friends, then to Cal um, to Los Angeles to see his rock and roll friends, and then coming back to Santa Barbara to be with me. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. Okay. I hadn't talked to him for two years because he had been gone for two years. Once I was in that realm and I saw, I observed what he was doing. Two weeks after I had that experience, I called him on the phone. Why wouldn't I? I wasn't stalking right. him. I already knew he loved me. So of course it was safe to call him. And I go, well, how, you know, what's new? What are you doing? And he said, well, two weeks ago, <laughs> I gave right. notes to Sam Brogo with this girl. I'm going this, I'm here with him. <laughs> and I'm coming back to Santa wow. Barbara. And it was like, whoa i mean it was it actually happened right so i didn't have to go find love i aligned with the universe yes. that matched the beliefs that it was already a done deal we already loved each other um and it worked and i use it all the time and, and you already explained this in mm -hmm. universe number one all my girlfriends were complaining there's no good guys i want to be married i want to have children and they're all single when mm -hmm. i shift over here very quickly by the way i mean it did it in an afternoon right, right. then i saw the evidence of it within two weeks mm -hmm. it, it was a physical reality 
Um, all my girlfriends were engaged. They were happy. They were either getting married, were, you know, they all had kids. It was like, oh my gosh. It's like, it <laughs> didn't just shift me because right. people go, oh, well, you stalked them. I didn't stalk them. I didn't have to change anything. And that's the key. If I had stayed in universe one where we're mostly trained, I would have had to feel like I had to overcome something. I have to become better so I can get him to love me. I right. would have to try and either trick him or give up and lose and never have what I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not about changing, manipulating, overcoming, healing something from my childhood. And I'm not putting that down because a lot of people still do that process. I just dropped it. I stopped believing in it. I stopped giving that universe my energy. Right. And I shifted my focus over to this one, which I had cre simultaneously created and it already existed because I had already created it in my desires and in my imagination and it already existed. It's kind of a simultaneous, we create, we experience. Yes. So all I did was have the desire, envision it, align with it, match the frequency, match the emotions of it, the feelings of it, and I was there. Amazing. And you know what? There's a lot of movies out there. Have you noticed that? Uh, um, yes. Somewhere in time, frequency, the it latest seems one like, yeah. yesterday, the it's movie. It's part of the human psyche to explore right now. It, I mean, Avengers Endgame is about parallel realities. I mean, it seems like every single time I turn on my TV, <laughs> we're, just, we're, we're, we're waking ourselves up. I mean, yes. back to the future. I mean, it's, it's like there's a whole bunch of, there are a whole bunch of movies out there that we've been creating. So it's like a hello, wake up. Same right. with our technology. We, we, we're using our technology now to show us what we're capable of doing. I mean, cell yeah. phones and, 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 and computers and the internet. I mean, it's all, it's all showing us it's yeah. frequency and energy to show us if the computers can do that, if TVs can do it, if cell phones can do it, we have that ability. We just don't know that. We do. So next level, I, of course, after you did that, you became very excited because you could keep on exploring. Once you said, oh, whoa, I, this, I can use this. So I'm, I want to bounce off this as somebody that also had a similar thing and had huge changes in my life by exploring. You mentioned in some of your books about the oversoul, the higher self, the <clears throat> is there an aspect, there's some jumps into parallel realities that it seems like our oversoul is kind of monitoring. Like, the, it, like if we jumped into that reality, then we'd have flying dinosaurs. We might go a little crazy. There, there's a, there's a, there, we have a certain uh, agreement or handshake agreement with our oversoul. Uh, the oversoul is protecting us. So it, it, there's a part of it. We enter realities that seem to maintain our sanity on some level. You, you might jump in and there's big reality shifts. So I, I wanted to talk to you about that. There's, there, as you explore this, it seems to be there's this, there's a limit that we are creating for ourselves and how we can go into these parallel realities and we can reduce this limit as we understand it. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've heard you interview people and ask that question before too. And by the way, so you think you're insane, huh? Or you think you're not insane? Okay. One of my friends goes, well, I think it's better to be insane than out you, know, you, you, you could probably say I'm insane. That's fine. <laughs> I've at least well, rationalized it so I don't think I am, but may, yeah, I'm probably a little bit. That's oh, okay. I'm kidding you. I'm kidding no, you. It's yeah. a funny statement. So here's my perception that yes, we have this oversoul or this, the, the infinite part of us that never left that realm that we know everything. We're, we're right. part of the, 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 the matrix. I mean, not the, the, um, the source. We're part of all that is. We're part of the creative field, mm -hmm. right? right? Our oversoul is still there. What we've desired, we're creators. We like creating. So um, time is simultaneous. Everything's happening right. at once. We're not, we are used to thinking linearly. Yes. And we do that so we can experience the movie. We do that so we can experience the movie. So um, if you wanted to go to a movie and I go, okay, here's the spool of the movie right here. It's all on one spool. Here you go. You're going to go, ah. Uh, Hey, right. I don't want to watch, I want to watch it. I want to see it go through the projector so I can experience it, right? So we've agreed to experience time for the experience so that everything doesn't happen at once, okay? Right. So our oversoul, our being, it, it's, it's almost like our oversoul has shot different aspects of us into different lifetimes, into different realms, mm. into different bodies. Right. We're creating, we're, you're in the fifth century and the 16th century and the 
32nd century. In other right. words, there's a youth that's already experiencing future lives, by the way. Right now. Such, yes, right now. There's so, not, so this idea of nonlinear reincarnation, I just love it. It's, well, it's it um, right to me. So it, it helped. Yeah, it's like it's it's a concept. And some people we all have different experiences here. We all are choosing right. to have different experiences because we want to see what it what it feels like. We want that movie. So mm -hmm. just like I mean, and I use the example, some people like to go to horror movies and war movies and dramas and 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 scary. It's like it's not my thing. I don't go to those movies, but other people right. love mm -hmm. those movies. And I go, cool, go have that experience. Right. Right. But, we're kind of entertainment junkies. We yeah. love the experience. We love the fun. We love the feelings. We love the emotions. We love the adventure. Or we love the sad or the grief or the crying or the, mm -hmm. so we're having, we, you can't encapsulate how wonderful and awesome and huge and infinite our soul is into one right. lifetime and not one no. lifetime at a time even. It's too small. So right. there's no such thing as time and spirit. So they're all happening at once now. <laughs> to your question, is our oversoul protecting us from being able to see all these different things, like go to where the dinosaurs are? Um, I don't know. This is just my perception. I don't know that I would use the word um, protect. I feel like I would use the word we're making a choice so we don't go um, just like it's a choice. It's not a protection. Just like if you walk into a department store and there's like 50 TV station st um, sets on, on display, right? And they're all showing a different program. You could see them all at once. It's not like yourself is protecting you from seeing them all at once. Right. But the, the experience is like, ah, that's chaotic. I'm not enjoying this. I can't. So we choose to focus. We choose mm -hmm. to focus for the full experience. Can we experience different timelines at the same at the same time i've done it a lot i've i've mm -hmm. experienced myself while i'm sitting in my home i've experienced myself and seen the environment the experience the whole thing i would i have been i am an oracle in delphi which is oh, one wow. of the reasons why my soul knows how to do this i <clears throat> absolutely have no doubt in my mind that one of my experiences is being an or oracle in Delphi. I could tell you what happened. I can tell you, blah, 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 but I, I, I've got the details oh. of what happened. I've been able to experience that and seeing that while I'm still here. Just like I can watch a movie on TV and still realize that I'm in my, in my, sitting on myself, right. right? I can have both experiences. Um, do I choose to focus on one at a time so I can get the full experience? Yes. I mean, when they say you can multitask, They've already proven that's not really possible because right. <laughs> you're you, you might be jumping around so protecting i don't know um it may be i could use the word protecting if it's like we feel like that would be too much it would be mind-blowing um because it's too soon for us to understand that we can go to these different places you know go see the dinosaurs and then come back time travel whatever right. um, it could be that in this realm today in this framework in this movie that we're experiencing today right now we either one, don't choose to do that. Two, we're too afraid to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might be just out of our own fear choosing not to right. do it. Do I believe we have the limitations that we can't do it? No. Do I believe that we're choosing not to do that just yet? Yeah. Could we do it? Pro yeah, I believe we can, but I don't right. want to. You really want to? And if you wanted to, you would do it. Right. Okay. It opens uh, up a <laughs> really incredible possibility that you could be walking by yourself on the street there's yes uh, <clears throat> and, and I, I think that i might have had that happen uh but you know that's just something that floats in your mind and goes away have you have you pondered that um i mean i love simultaneous that. incarnation yeah oh yeah 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 well there's okay so let's reel it back into just look at what what they're saying about parallel universes right now it's not just other lifetimes and other mm -hmm. bodies every time this is quantum physics every right. time you make a choice there's one you that chooses that and another choose another you that chose not that right? right so i use the analogy let's say you're walking down your main street you're headed for a meeting you're kind of running late and you look over there and go oh, i'd really love to go grab a cup of coffee but i don't have time for that well one you went on to the meeting the other you went and got a cup of coffee right. and it's having a parallel new life all on its own, but they're right. so similar, you're not gonna notice that, okay? I mean, right. we've had deja vu experiences, so it's like, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, you're probably crossing into them again, right? right? But in this lifetime, so can you have an experience of it feeling yourself here or you know, a, a parallel you that's right there? 
Um, I believe you can, although mm -hmm. right now we still think we have boundaries between one universe and another. Like there's a veil. Right. But like they're saying the veil's getting thinner. Okay. It might be. It feels it, like it to me. It hey, really I'm talking to people on the other side all the time. I have people call me all the time. Is my, my dad died. Can we get in touch with them? And I talk mm -hmm. to him the whole bit. So he's just, it's just in a different frequency. It's in a parallel universe. It's in another realm. It's whatever you want to call it. They still exist. They didn't die. Mm -hmm. I can talk to them while I'm sitting here. So the veil's getting thin, thinner. And a lot of people are having the experience where they feel their loved ones around them or they get mm -hmm. signs or, but they're feeling it. So to me, the separation between the realms are, is getting thinner because we're becoming more aware, just like you can see auras, right. getting the sense of this, we're becoming more aware. I feel like we limit ourselves because we want the experience of being limited. Right. You know, you don't want to sit in a movie theater and you're getting into the movie and you're really getting the, wow, right? And have somebody poke you on the side going, hey, you know, that that that's, those aren't even real people up there, right? They're just little yeah. lights blinking off and on, which, by the way, is what it is in the theater, right? Right. right. They're just, they're not real people. They're the little lights <laughs> blinking off and on. True. But you want to have the experience of believing there's people there, right? Yeah. So we don't want, there's a part of us that doesn't want to fully wake up because we're loving the movie. Right. I feel like we're starting to wake ourselves up now, though, because it's starting to get either monotonous or it's turned into a nightmare. You know, we're going, Very good point. true. yeah, we've lost ourselves. <laughs> like we forget, we've forgotten who we are. And it's like, wow. So it's either getting boring or are we getting like, oh, this is just a mess. It's too painful. I don't like this. It's motivating us to wake up. So talking about hearing voices from the other side. I think often I have a little bit of the tan soak in, come in and I hear the voice. Ah, I, you tell, heard I, I tell myself that I'm just creating it. It's just a, because I have a very wild imagination and I love fiction and movies, like you say. And, and, and when I hear my mom, that's, I'm just thinking that's probably what my mom would say. And I'm just, uh, my imagination's running wild. And I, and there's a part of me that really wants to differentiate and know how to, how to identify that's, directly from my imagination that is my mom talking to me right now yeah so. um it's it's very common i can get that right. too and i've been doing this for decades right. right so the reason i know it's real is because i've had enough evidence when right. people call me or come to see me and i tune into their 12 year old son who crossed suddenly in their sleep mm -hmm. um and it gives me details i don't know these people i don't know him i don't know the mom um, I'm even hearing things from somebody on the other side that possibly even the mom didn't know. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's not like I'm being psychic and reading her mind and saying things that she knows and she'd want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, they usually, I don't hear it. Most of the time I don't hear it out loud. I have occasionally, but most of the time I hear it in my consciousness. Okay. Right. I hear it in my mind and they use words that I wouldn't use. The way okay. you know, it, they, they use their language. And I had one man come once um, from the other side. His wife was here and he was talking like a freaking sailor. And I went, I'm so sorry. Every other word out of my mouth was like a four letter word. And I go, I'm sorry, I don't talk like this. She goes, nope, that's my husband. You're talking exactly <laughs> like him. Word for word, those are the words he used. You know, that kind of stuff. And sometimes I can smell like pipe tobacco where I can smell pot and I go, oh, God, your son was a pot smoker, right? Oh yeah, I love that, you know, so I can smell it. But they use words and their language. And so the way you can start discerning is, did they say it in their language or did you use your words? Because okay. um, that's one way to do it. And then sweetie is sometimes it just takes practice. The good news is, is I get validation right. because people will go, yeah, that's true. And nobody knew that. You know, there's no way you could know that. Or even secondary, they'll say something that even the mom didn't know. And then she'll go check it out and go, oh my gosh, obviously right. you weren't reading my mind because I didn't even know that about my son, but um, his sister validated that that did happen. Right. So um, it's just practicing anything. We've learned anything by practicing, walking, right. eating, writing, driving a car, <laughs> talking. We've learned all that by practicing. And then at some point you gotta be willing. You can't be afraid of it. You have to trust it. You have to keep practicing. And then you've also got to give yourself validation when it does happen. Okay? Now, related somewhat, because you mentioned remote viewing, and <clears throat> it feels to me like the Akashic is, the veil with the Akashic record is dissolving, that the, the we're getting access to 
to a kind of a group consciousness, a group memories. For instance, I read a lot of old authors on my channel. I'll read Neville Goddard or, or from the 1900s. And as I've done this, I've started, it's like they're there. They're talking to me. They're telling me, no, 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 that's not how you do it. Or, and, and, and so uh, am, I, am I remote viewing a portion of their soul? But that's their, uh, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm getting, uh, there, I don't, it doesn't feel like that the spirit of that author's there. I'm accessing some ax, um, version of them in the Akashic. Mm -hmm. So do you, there's a difference, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Or is there not? I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know that there's a difference. You're thinking in terms of time and space, which right. is I'm, 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 I'm thinking there's a difference in information and a living volitional being that mm -hmm. will respond to what I'm talking to. And another, I'm just getting information. As right. if I went on the computer and I could get all the information from Neville Goddard, uh, but Neville Goddard is not talking to me, he, responding to what I'm saying. So uh, the, the volitional spirit would be, I'm in a communication and that's, maybe I'm not understanding it. Do you, I'm no, sorry. I to I, no, there, there is a difference. I get it. There's the information and then there's the conveyor of the information. Right. Okay? But you know, and, and so, yes, you can say, well, am I getting it, the information or from the person? I go, well, does it matter? Is what's important, the information. True. And second of all, honestly, it's all connected. There's no separation. Right. So whether you've got a being telling it to you or you tap directly into the source, um, right. you got the information. Right. You know, so what we can, we can get in a trap of getting caught in the um, phenomenon of it. Right. Okay? That's what I know I'm doing. Crazy. Well, and I heard you um, interview Cindy too going in my, I would love this because in my experience, when I talk to spirit guides, they don't give names. They don't give names. Right. It's like, they don't care about names. They don't want people to tune into it's like, oh, I got this special guide named blah, 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 blah. The, anytime I've done it, they will not give names unless the person I'm reading for really needs a name. They need somebody because yeah, they don't use names. Perfect. It's not how they are. Yeah. yeah, in my experience. But right. some people need names or some people they're having that experience. So it's all just different experiences. Um, I don't, I, it's like, for me, the big important stuff is what's the message what's the information right. did i get it from seth did i get it from abraham did i get it from right. tapping into source did i get it from um a, a team of guides you know where did i get it the information to me and the helping me move forward is more important than the messenger to me right okay now there are messengers that i tend to trust more just because it feels more advanced to me right um, but it's not a judgment it's just what i choose to, it's, i resonate with it more that's all that makes more sense. Now you've been doing this since 1984. So yeah. it's a very interesting perspective. Uh, <clears throat> have you noticed a change recently or has it kind of been the same? Like, you know, over the last 10 years, has they, have things spiritually on the other side and what you're noticing with other people, has it, has it increased? Has it changed? Is it more intense? In any oh, way. you know it has, right? You know, well, first, I want to get your right? Okay, so just just <clears throat> basic evidence that things have changed. When I first started doing psychic readings or expanded mm -hmm. consciousness, or whatever you want to call it, it was about eighty percent women and twenty percent males. Right. Now it's sixty forty. Oh wow! Okay. Way more men are calling me and having readings. So it's like, wow, something's up. Something something's is up in the consciousness. Number one, number two, more and more people are stepping up and sharing mm -hmm. the unusual experiences. Before it was hush hush, don't do that, that's scary, that's evil, you're crazy, they'll lock you up. So the consciousness and the acceptance of it has shifted, okay? Right. You can see that. Also, the kids that are showing up on this planet right now, it's like, whoa, baby, something's yeah. up. There's a party coming because <laughs> the consciousness that's showing up in some of these kids are like, mm -hmm. I have a really good friend, she was born strict Catholic. Okay, the belief, like, wow, right down the rules, right? right. Irish Catholic. Her four-year-old daughter would come to her and share straight out about her other mom and dad. Mommy and daddy, you know, we lived on the blue house on the hill and in the blue house and we had the dog and daddy would, you know, feed. And my friend finally came to me and she goes, my daughter's ex um, ex remembering another life, isn't she? Straight wow. out, a four-year-old. And there's a lot more of that going on. A lot more kids that are having psychic experiences, talking to grandma on the other side who's already died, you know, seeing mm -hmm. angels, all kinds of stuff. So has the consciousness shifted? Um, let me say something weird here. In the current reality I'm in, in the universe that I'm in right now, the one I'm choosing to be in, 
Oh yeah, it's changing a lot, okay. <laughs> are there other people in other universes that are still having the old paradigm, the old? Have you ever had any encounters with uh, people that have had memories or seen other memories from other planets other than Earth? Yeah, I'm getting that a lot from a lot of clients right now. There's a whole, um, there's a whole group of people now that are starting to come forward that are having galactic experiences and galactic mm -hmm. messages, wow. which is, <coughs> it's not where I'm going, but it is where a lot of people are going because we're all having different experiences here, mm -hmm. sweetie. There's no better than or worse than. Right. We're infinite beings having different experiences. And when you see that time is holographic, mm -hmm. it's not linear, then the whole idea of, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna upset a few people here, of evolution. <laughs> right. Like we start out here and we're really dense and we're getting more aware. Mm -hmm. For some of us, that's what we're doing in our own personal evolution. Other, other souls are choosing to have experiences that are very flat earth or very old consciousness and i'm trying not to sound judgmental right people that still hold on to the 50s mentalities or the 20s mentality right. or something there it doesn't mean that i'm more evolved it means i'm having a different experience right their soul is probably having in the year 2032 you know this amazing science you know they they've already they're they're also having a very futuristic experience already and another aspect of their soul is having very I want to go back to the times of, you know, whatever. So right. it, it's not that we're better than or worse than in my experience. And I'm evolving my awareness and my education and my understanding of who right. we are. I'm doing that in this lifetime. I'm, I'm also simultaneously still being a, an, a, an Oracle in Delphi back right. in the whatevers. And I'm also having an experience. I don't know if you said, um, Chet Snow wrote a book called, um, mass dreams, I think it was, they did this whole hypnotic hypnosis experiment where they were mm -hmm. not only putting people into past lives, they were putting people into future lives. Mm -hmm. And people were, were sharing what they were experiencing in the year, I think it was 2150 that he put wow. us into. 2150. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing what we saw in 2150. Um, and so for us to be able to see it, that means it was happening already right. because that was, and that's the same when i see people's past present and future i can't see their future if it's not already happening if they're not already creating it einstein said that right. uh, general relativity he goes just because you haven't been to a certain lake yet so it's not in your timeline in your experience doesn't mean it doesn't already exist you right. just haven't gotten there yet so do you understand that people right. are having different experiences? There's no better than or worse than. We're all adding to the consciousness of source. We're right. all expanding the creative experiences of source. So whatever experience you're having right now, or if my friends are having galactic experiences, or they remember being on another planet, and I don't remember that, it's not like somebody's crazy and somebody's not. It's like, wow, cool. Look what your soul's creating. Exactly. Yeah. It's... Interesting. Now, another thing I want to ask you about that uh, I, I, something I discussed on my channel recently was the walk-in. Somebody leaving, somebody, maybe they just, they choose to experience something else or only wanted to experience, but didn't want to actually commit suicide. And they make a deal with another soul and they switch bodies. Uh, you know, uh, have you seen any evidence of that happening? Um, I know that people say it has. I haven't had direct experience with that, but so what? It's another version right. of creating. It's another right, right. version of creating. It's like we have infinite ways of creating different experiences. We have no limits at all. Right. Okay, Seth actually says that our idea of space and the planets is faulty because right. it's all just consciousness. It's but consciousness. everything's consciousness. Right. We're creators. We're making all of it up. So if somebody right. wants to believe they can fly to another solar system, okay, cool. Go for it. Yeah. Like, like that movie. Have that experience. It's all adding to consciousness. Am I getting too far out there for you? Or is, is Not at all. No, that, that's what I love about it. So uh, that's what the infinite you is so amazing in this concept, the idea of the infinity of this creation. There's so many aspects to it. It's so much fun to talk about. And you've really touched on that. And so a lot of my uh, viewers are very interested in, in, in love 
or in, in, in finding wealth. And I recommend looking at your books for a different aspect to that and some techniques to do that. And uh, I think that, that they're all fantastic. And I just want to thank you for your contribution. It's really helped me to kind of understand what I've been through. So uh, it reduces my, my sense of insanity a little bit. <laughs> but... Uh, and so if people want to learn how to read auras or what their aura is at, as a beginning point, they can go to auracolors.com. And uh, so do, you, do we have any new books on the, on the horizon? Anything coming? Mm, not yet. I'm in the midst right now. I've been, my soul has called me to be quiet and to go to the next level myself first. Yeah. Because what I do is I learn it first. I experiment with it first. I see that it's a truth. Uh, that we're capable of doing it. And then I, then I share it with people. Right. So I'm being called right now in, in our universe right now, we're, we're experiencing a shift in the consciousness, right? You're seeing right. a major shift on the planet. Okay. So in that reality, I'm being called to go to a higher level of understanding so I can mm -hmm. help with the shift. And right. because we can go into fear, we can go into resistance, we can go into drama, we can go to a horror movie, whatever. I don't choose to do that. And if people want love in their lives, it's like, okay, create that movie. We're infinite creators. Right. So this is the experience I'm choosing to have now, which is to be quieter. Which, oh. by the way, sorry, I dragged all you guys into it because now no. everybody's going to stay at home and be quiet. It's like, ah, <laughs> oh, sorry, you're in my universe right <laughs> now. I wanted to be quieter and stay at home more. Eh, guess what? You're all I in my have universe. worried that I created that too. <laughs> you know, well, you have. You yeah, have, did, yeah. yeah. So as we go from one universe to the next, everybody in that universe is going to be in alignment with what we're right. focused on and creating, everybody there. If we go into another one, there's still going to be the same people, but with a different energy, a different attitude, they're all going to be joining in and aligning with that belief system. Right. So uh, one very popular aspect of this that's kind of talking about the shift is the discussion of the new earth going all the way back to when 2012, when people were talking about that and Dolores Cannon. And it's so, it's just in, in this literature, in this field, it's a very popular topic. What is your opinion of the new earth? Okay, good. I like that you said, what's my opinion? This is my right. perspective based what is on your per what I know, what I've learned. That's what all I've we can do, with. right? Yeah, exactly right. Well, let's see if the new earth is supposed to show up in 2150. Uh, it already exists. <laughs> and <laughs> right. we just are learning to align with it. And matter of fact, there's already, um, um, according to quantum physics, according to parallel universes in quantum physics, there's already a earth, an earth that got blown up in the 50s, right? With the big, right. you know, nuclear explosion, it already got destroyed. There's infinite number of earths right. so it's like which one are you choosing to align with and the cool story like we're going into a new earth we're going into the fifth dimension like okay that's a cool story let's do that movie let's do that <laughs> movie okay is it the only movie no but it's kind of a fun one it's a positive right, one, right? do you, you understand what i'm saying now right i understand yeah. yeah we are creators we can create any version any movie we want it just you know i i just what i'm wanting people to do is get out of feeling like we're victims right or we're at the effective, or we're helpless, because then we go into fear. Mm -hmm. Then we go into fear, we go into frustration, we go into desperation. So my whole thing about talking about all this and showing we're greater than we've been taught and improving it by showing the abilities, bending spoons and stuff like that, is to get people out of thinking so small, so limited, and so fear-based that we can, to me, learning all this stuff makes life so much more fun. It does. So much more interesting, so much more fun, so much more magical, and so much more exciting and amazing. So people don't have to choose to believe it. I don't try to convince people of this, but that's kind of my answer about the new earth. Right, it's right. Like, yeah, it's already right there. Now, what am I doing in this one that it's not the new earth yet? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting the juice out of this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the drama out of this story yet, and I'm not ready for that one yet, but I already know it exists. So at any time, I can right. align with it. That is wonderful to think about and and it, uh, thank you for bringing the magic and uh, that's what i want everybody else to is there something uh, you know i as you probably i meet a lot of people that are really struggling with fear maybe yeah. it's because they're watching tv too much or it's just human nature on some level and uh, as we've discussed it can be destructive it'll pull you into a parallel universe where that that there's a lot of fear yeah. so what what can we say to them what can we say to those people that are struggling with fear with what you've learned in your opinion? Um, if I were to jump to the chase, this would be my real answer. Right. 
It's all consciousness. We're making it all up. It's mm -hmm. an illusion. It's all energy. And whatever you feed is going to intensify. So at some point, if you're, if you're in fear and you're enjoying it, get the full juice out of it until you get bored with it and you decide to do something else. If you don't want to be there, you have choice. You got to believe that you have choice. We get very addicted, Brian, to our emotions. We, do. And we get very addicted to our stories. And so it becomes very dramatic. And I go, ah, and so it becomes an addiction. So at some point, just knowing that these other options exist, that you're creating your life, not as a judgment or a blame, as a power, as, as a creative power, as you're a creative. So learn, what I would say to people is learn who you really are. Learn about the truth about that you're this spiritual being, that you're this amazing infinite being that has infinite choices and infinite creative power. And if you learn that, this starts going away. Trying to fight this or overcome this, anything you fight, you put attention into. Okay, and then that grows it. Now you got a bigger monster because you're afraid of it and you're fighting it. So what I usually do is go, ah, don't give it attention. Let it go, get it out of your consciousness. Stop repeating the story. Stop feeding the story and focus on creating a different story until you actually see that that story starts taking its real life. Sounds wonderful. So just remember the magic. That's what I'm gonna take out of this for sure. And I just wanna thank you so much for teaching me and, and learning so much and i just everybody check out all of pamela's books and uh welcome to the reality revolution thank you brian for what you're doing i love that you're bringing this conversation to such a high level thank you so much you. appreciate that well welcome to the reality revolution I'm just really excited today because this is the first day that my book is released. This is it, The Reality Revolution. Worked on this for a very long time. So many of the things that I discovered along the way and I was excited to share it with everybody. Tell you a little bit about it. Uh, I'm like everybody else. I'm interacting in the world and, and starting to realize that my thoughts created reality. As I did this, I started to see some major shifts in my reality. I started to explore the idea of maneuvering through parallel realities. I'm your host, Brian Scott.